Four. So, as we've been reporting this morning, the biggest energy price hike in living memory has kicked in today. The government says it is supporting families who are most at risk from rising costs. Some charities, though, say the changes aren't going far enough. Uh, we can speak now to Labour Party leader Sakir Starmer. Mr. Starmer, very good morning to you good this morning. morning. Uh, just on a, a technical, did you check your meter last night and take a reading, as so many millions of people have done? I didn't, but on the phone to my wife, she and our 13 year old son were doing exactly that. Um, and they were about to go and then register, I think, on the website, but that then crashed. So they were trying to do it um, when I spoke to them last night. Yeah, and I mean, this is one of the small things, and everyone's doing this at my thing. Yeah. One of the small things I can do to try and protect myself a bit. Now, you'll be well aware. Um, that there are a lot of people very frightened. I, I think if from a distance, we've known it's coming for a while. The day comes and you take your meter reading and then you start thinking, what if it's £60 pounds a month more? Yeah. What if it's £70 pounds a month more? What are the implications for me, my family, yeah. my household situation? It's a very frightening time for people. I think it's really frightening. And um, across the country, I've spoken to people... Um, in the last few weeks, and it's the, mo the thing that's really on their mind, and they're tossing and turning at night about what they should do about it. Um, last week, I was in Stevenage with um, some pensioners and other people, and I had three descriptions that really brought it home on a human level to me. I had somebody saying they're keeping the temperature at 12 degrees in their home. I had somebody else saying that they use sleeping blankets, uh, sleeping bags, and blankets to sit in. And then one person said to me, we don't, I don't get up now until midday. I stay in bed for as long as I possibly can because I'm so worried about the heating bills. And that is the level of anxiety and stress that people are um, experiencing with energy bills going up, um, you know, a sort of record amount, um, the, the highest they've gone up for, since records are actually kept on this. And that is a very, very real worry. Uh, and in a situation like that... I think people say, well, I want my government to help me here. I need to know that they get it, they understand what the issue is, and there's a response to it from the government. And what we saw from the government in the spring statement from the Chancellor was just pathetic because it was a non-response when people really needed it. What we've said as the Labour Party um, is we need a practical plan to deal with this that will actually reduce energy prices. So we've said if you were to tax the oil and gas companies in the North Sea, who've made more profit than they expected um, because the global prices are so high, you could use that windfall tax to reduce the energy bills by up to £600 for those that need it most. For so, how long? Well, that would be something which would deal with the immediate problem now. Now, I accept because the bills are going okay, up today. That, that's not acceptable. So, well, well, so let, that, me, that let, me, no, let me clarify what, what you've just said. So you have a one-off tax, yep. and you're very straightforward. It's a one-off tax, so you get a lump sum. So you, you, in theory, presumably now you've done the maths and you know how much your lump sum would be. How many bills would that cover for how long? Well, it would, it would accommodate the hike today, which is going up. On average, I mean, obviously it depends for each family, six to seven hundred pounds. Okay, so let me be clear. That. So let me now, be absolutely clear. Sorry, I want to get this absolutely clear. So if you were in government today and these price rises were coming in, you would guarantee that no one would be paying a higher bill today or tomorrow. Is that right? We would lower those bills um, using the windfall tax, using VAT receipts as well. But yes, that's the whole point of the scheme. Now, I accept... For how long? I accept... Well, that would deal with the crisis today. That would no, deal no, with the issue today. When you say today, are you talking about today well, as in a month? What about in three months' time when people's bills are still higher? Would you still be covering it then? Yes, this covers this... The energy cap um, is obviously changing today, so that means that um, the six to seven hundred pounds is obviously over a year, um, so this covers that over a year. And then more now, in October? Well, I'm just coming to that, which is obviously... It may well be that there is another hike in October and we need another practical plan in place in October if that happens. Um, the first thing to say is we're in this situation today, those prices are going up today and we've got a plan to deal with it. The government hasn't got a plan to so deal with I, it. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry to, uh, to pin you down this. I think well, it's no, important uh, people understand. You're saying that your one-off one -off tax for these companies would cover the period between now on, and October. So if you were in power... That is what you would do, so people would not face these price rises between now and October? It would 
cover the price rises today and it would cover them for a year. Now, uh, and that's well, a very practical plan. You don't know what the plan. price rises are. Well, I'm coming to that. Um, that would cover, if the price rises go up today as they've gone up, this is a plan that deals with that. So that's um, a practical plan saying that the oil and gas companies that made more profit than they were expecting um, should pay the, their fair part in this, um, compared with the government that says their plan is a £200 loan in October, so they're not even putting the money on the table until October, £200, and then they say um, those paying the bills must then repay that loan over the years to come. So there's a very big divide here. We say oil and gas companies have made more profit than they expected um, should play their part, reduce those bills today by up to £600. The government says do nothing today, wait till October, then have a £200 loan which those that are paying the bills have to repay. Should there be an increase in October, and we don't know that, but, you know, let's be realistic, that may well now happen, then obviously we need to look again. It may well be, and I think this will probably be the case, that the global prices will have gone up again, therefore causing this problem, and that means those profits will be even greater for the oil and gas companies in October than they are today. But we do need, um, I accept the, the, the challenge, that we need a medium and long-term solution to this. I think there are a number of parts to that. There's obviously that we need to turbocharge renewables. We need to go much faster on nuclear, get ourselves off energy coming well, from Russia. Well, all those things Russia. require investment well, by they the power do, companies who say that that's the reason why they have to keep the prices as there's they There's another thing that we need to do in addition to that, and that is a massive insulation programme of our homes because we're leaking so much energy. I'll state the and obvious. Someone listened to you at home and said, well, I'd love to do that. How much is it going to cost me and where's the money coming from? Well, let me just give you an example and then I'll come straight to that. Um, it, I was in Kirklees last week where, on a council estate, Kirklees Council have done this. And I met the residents there in the homes that have been refitted. Um, they took me in. It's warm and their bills have gone Paid for through by the, the floor. Council. It's gone through the floor. Well, yes, it's an investment by the council, but it pays for itself. But there's no point as going round and round in circles saying, we can't do anything about it, let's put it off till tomorrow. This government's been in power for 12 years and it's put this off till tomorrow every time and we can't keep doing Can that. I ask you, uh, we, we were speaking to the, uh, the boss of Octopus Energy this morning. Now, they did, haven't made any profits for two years and uh, he's not answerable for the rest of the industry, yep. but that's, that it was made very clear. One of the things we were trying to press him on is what happens in the end game situation when someone can't pay their bill. So there are various measures in place yeah. to help, and they have a fund, I think it's 100 million pounds, their company does, and they will help as and when they can. But there will come a point when that money runs out. Now, you, yep. if you're in government, would you make it illegal for, for someone's energy to be cut off? And I, I'm not, you'll clarify for me whether that's the case at the moment. What happens when the money runs out, someone who has a disability, someone who's uh, in poverty. What oh. happens then and would you yep. seek some kind of government measure, an extreme measure, something we haven't seen before, to help those people? Well, firstly, isn't it shocking we're even having this discussion in 21st century Britain after what would 12 you years of a, uh, of a Tory government, that we're talking about a situation where people might have their energy cut off because they simply can't afford to pay for What would you do to it. preclude that? The, the first thing I'd do is exactly what I've described, which is to enable those that most need it to have the £600 on their, towards their energy bills that they desperately need at the moment. That would mean that very few people would be in the position of not being able to pay for their energy. So you're putting to me, quite rightly, I understand it, a challenge, which is, assuming the government is path as pathetic as it is and doesn't do anything, we're going to have people in this awful position, what would we do? First answer is I wouldn't put that in, them in that awful position in the first place. But the, the fact that we're even talking about people having their energy cut off... Well, my impression is you don't have an answer for that question because what you've said is they shouldn't be in that position. You're I, I'm, I'm giving you... There are people who will be watching this programme this morning who may well be thinking, by the end of this month, I genuinely don't think I can pay my bill. And it may be in three months' time yeah. or after October when the prices go up again. And you say they should be turning government. I'm asking you, as the leader of the Labour yeah. Party, what is the end game? How can they be helped? I'm not looking backwards. I'm looking to what happens on that day. No, I'm not looking backwards either. Um, I'm saying 
what we would do, first and foremost, is not put people in that position. You said that by... before. Well, I know, but it's very, very important. People are going to be in that awful position because the government is doing nothing. If the government tomorrow adopted our scheme and reduced uh, and, and was able to use that windfall tax to, to help people with their bills by £600, people wouldn't be put in that awful position. I, I think that is a very important answer to your question because that means people aren't put um, in the invidious position of... As, as many people are at the moment, do I heat or do I eat? I mean, these are terrible choices people are having to make. So I say don't put people in that position. If, if I were listening to you now and I was one of those people who really struggling with my bells, really facing that in-game scenario, I wouldn't be terribly reassured by what you've just told me because what you've said is you're hoping and you'd think that people wouldn't be in that situation. No, I don't I'm... see any reassurance in what well, you're saying. As the opposition... Our role is obviously to criticise the government and say you've got it wrong, you don't understand the position people are in, and it's a pathetic response from the government. The challenge I then get, quite rightly, from yourself and others, well, that's all very well, you're criticising the government and saying they've got it wrong. What would you do as the Labour Party in this situation? Therefore, I've come along and I've said, well, we've now got this costed plan to answer that question, what would we do. So the problem is the high energy bills, um, the challenge is the pathetic response of the government and the plan that Labour's put on the table is one that I actually, almost everybody that I've spoken to about this windfall tax says, actually, Keir, that sounds to me like a very good idea. And if only the government did that, I wouldn't be in this awful position. OK, I don't position. want to go over old material, but I, one other question I did want to ask you about is the fines in connection with Downing Street yeah. parties. Now, I, I'm, I'm still not clear as to what you're saying. Do you believe that all those who've been issued fines, that we should know who those people are? Is that what you're saying? Yes. I think that... Um... So you're calling on the police <coughs> to give us that information, or are you asking them to come forward to tell us? We spoke this morning to a government minister who said uh, he, he, he would tell us, frankly, if he'd been fined, he'd tell us, but it's an individual decision. So um, which, which is it? You want the police to tell us or people to voluntarily come forward? Why should they? Well, I, I think it's just a fundamental principle. The government put in place rules which we all complied with, which were really hard, were really, really hard for people. And we all, there were familiar stories, you'll know, of people who didn't go to funerals, um, didn't see their children born. And then there were everyday examples of every family, including my own, where we weren't able to do things such as see elderly relatives. And it really hurt. And that's why emotionally this goes so deep. Um, those rules were made, and we now know that, um, although the Prime Minister actually lied about this, um, those in Downing Street broke the rules in the Prime Minister's home and the Prime Minister's office. And now we're supposed to accept the argument, well, that can be kept a secret. You don't need to know who that was. If I was watching this programme and I'd not seen an elderly relative, um, not seen my children, and I'd learned somebody had broken the rules in Downing Street, the very place where they were making the rules, and then people say, oh, well, my privacy, you can't, I can't tell you whether the Prime Minister's wife... Um, has broken the rules. I find that utterly unacceptable. So, let's be clear, you want what you want? Boris Johnson to go in front of a camera and, and say categorically, I haven't received a fine and my wife has not received a fine either. Is that what you're requiring? Yes, of course I do. I would expect the Prime Minister to say whether he's got a fine or not. And, you know, I don't want to go after... I, I've got no business in personally attacking the Prime Minister's wife. And when she was being attacked a few months ago, I, I made it my business to say I didn't think those attacks were Well, you've just said right. that you want her I, to, I do to think tell you if I, she's had a fine. I think if the Prime Minister's wife has received a fine for partying in Downing Street when the rest of the country is complying with the rules, I think we're entitled to know. I don't want to attack her personally. But I do think we're entitled to know. I think it's quite surprising people think, oh, no, it's all right, you don't need to know um, about this. This hurt people because they complied with the rules. It hurt families up and down the country. Yes, Alan, thank you very much for joining us here on The Surface. Thank morning. you. Much appreciated.